I've been racing in go-kart and, and single-seater together with uh, uh, Lewis Hamilton, uh, Nico Rosberg, Seb Vettel, uh, all those guys. From 2008, uh, I was in love with, uh, with Le Mans and, and I knew it was something I really wanted to do big time. At the end, you are alone in your car, but uh, you still do share all the emotions with, uh, with that crew, you know, with the bunch of people. It's really something special, and this is what I love about endurance racing. Oh, it's not bad. I mean, the grip is low, yeah. both. But... Makes sense to make two laps for, for this, for sure. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I will, I will do the same then now, make sure I'm in. And just in case we do a second lap. 30 seconds, under 30 seconds to open pit exit for LMGT qualifying. First qualifying session of the new season and a brand new format. A 10 minute session for GTs and for prototypes. One driver per car, the pressure is really on, on the cold spa track. Spa bites almost immediately. This will take a few minutes to solve, we've got a lot of cleaning to do. That's Maybe he that's too, too, much too much on the inside. On the inside. Red flag again, red flag again. I mean, first of all, we have to wait if it's parked for me, but as soon as we bring it here, we cover it. The wagon okay. is from Schwab. And this guy is Five, four, three, two. After the dramas, the pressure was extreme. In the AM class, Ben Keating, first time out in an Aston Martin, claimed a resounding pole. And the Corvette here in a run-up to Le Mans also qualified strongly in GTE Pro. Ferrari raced towards the checker looking for the pole, but two crushing laps from Porsche's Kevin Estra left the 92 car clear of the field. You're one second ahead of everyone. Man, so I was the first in the first round. I For LMP2 and Hypercar, 10 minute session and one driver. Maximum pressure. Three, two, one. Beat exit is over. Qualifying session for LMP and Hypercar has started. Les secteurs, ils sont avionesques, hein, United. Ils Incroyable. Il n'y a pas de miracle. Hein. In the brand new Hypercar class, Alpine challenged Toyota, coming up third. But the Toyotas locked out the front row of the grid. In the battle of teammates, it was Kamui Kobayashi who claimed the fastest lap of the session. Oh, man. G-Drive came close, but United Autosports' Philip Albuquerque was the dominant force in LMP2. I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> Felt good, though. Felt good. Well, thank you guys as well for the setup as well. So, no, I was just alone, and I'm not alone there. Yeah, mate. So, awesome stuff. Really the important good. thing is now with the row ahead. Sorry? We're starting in the second row, as opposed to the third. So, inside, huh? Yeah. Make history again, Kamui. You keep doing this. Oh yeah. Good luck at Le Mans. First hypercar follow. Not bad. Yeah. 
with a clean lap. Mm. I mean, I didn't go crazy. Make sure. Yeah, because I don't want to cock up. You know? you know, yeah, with 10 minutes, you have no, yeah. nothing to play with. Yeah. Congrats, man. Good one. Right. You did it in the end. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> found a few. Found a little bit of time. We'll come after you tomorrow. Don't worry. <laughs> we see you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> For some, it would be a long night. I am born around the track and um, I spent a lot of time when I was a child uh, uh, coming with my parents watching the, the Spa 24 hours. Um, you know, in the late 70s, you know, amazed by the drivers. I was spending so much time waiting behind the door of the boxes to wait for having an autograph or having a, just a sticker, you know, given by one of the drivers. I was always dreaming about sports car and about prototype. Starting the championship here in Spa, it's a, it's a gift and I feel lucky. I wouldn't like to be anywhere else. Please, just a little bit of attention. So, we are going to the first home race, first WEC. We've been going through a difficult time the last few days, but uh, I'm sure we will stay strong, come back to the front, and I'm sure you will do a great job. Yeah, we just have to focus on our goal. Thank you. Side by side, turn 15. Side by side, turn 15. Steady pace, steady pace. The Six Hours of Spa is underway. Season nine of the FIA World Endurance Championship. Toyota leading into the first turn. Lockups behind, big skids, underbreaking in LMP2, but they all get through and another big lockup. Miguel Molina, the lead Ferrari, right behind Kevin Estra in the GT field. And look at that, Phil Hansen ahead of the two Toyotas after they started very cautiously. Now then, Mike Conway, the pole sitter, gets back in front. So the hypercars lead up the Kemmel straight for the first time. They deploy their hybrid and through comes Sebastian Buemi, Phil Hampton, LMP2 leader. Those cars are not his battle. It's what's behind him that he is concerned about. And right behind him, the yellow and black of Racing Team Netherlands. The battle is on in all classes. Take a look again at the start, squirming under braking as the LMP2 field is bunched up behind the slow Toyotas. Phil Hansen goes by out of La Source, but then the hybrid drive pulls Mike Conway back in front. Battle for fourth, Kedo Vandegaard, yellow and black, and behind him, Andre Negrau, third in the hypercar class. A cautious start for the Alpine driver, perhaps wisely so, in a brand new machine to him. His first ever race in the top flight. He moves back up ahead into fourth place, and he's chasing down the LMP2 leader. 
sweeping around the majestic Spa Francorchamps. What a great place to start any championship. Kevin Escher, the pole man, leads from the two Ferraris. Miguel Molina in second place in the GTE Pro class, ahead of Alessandro Pierre Guidi. And Pierre Guidi jumps the Porsche of Richard Leitz, the 91 car, in fourth. LMP2 leader Phil Hansen for United Autosports, the team that won Le Mans and won the championship last year in their class, losing very little at all to the Toyotas that are running 1-2. The bright blue Aston Martin of pole sitter Ben Keating leads in the GTE AM class from the reigning champions, the 83A of Corsa Ferrari, and Paul Dallalana in third spot in the 98 Aston Martin, Brand new livery and new Brazilian teammates for him. Intense battle in GTE Pro, riding on board with Richard Leitz out of Redion up the long, steep Kemmel Strait, and in front, the Ferrari battle. Miguel Molina in front, but look at this, Alessandro Pierre Guidi with the toe up the hill, pulls out of the slipstream and neatly goes by for second place. Esteban Garcia of Real Team Racing getting tagged by the second Ferrari, Miguel Molina. Perfect, and now engine map four. Engine map four. Okay for you? Okay, copy, copy. We will have more power, step by step. Alpine easing themselves gradually into this brand new era of hypercar racing, stepping up the power. Battle for third in GTE AM, the Ferrari of Francois Perodo under pressure from the D station Aston Martin of Japanese debutant Tomo Fuji. And he goes through, he and the Porsche in front, Matt Campbell, the 77 Dempsey car that was rebuilt overnight after the qualifying crash, started from the back row. Battle for third place, Phil Hansen, LMP2 leader for United. Down the inside, Andre Negrau in the Alpine. And the hypercar moves up into third spot. They are picking up the pace as the laps unroll. Prepare to swap position. Prepare to swap position. Sebastian Buemi, second place in the number eight Toyota, hasn't shown much sign of wanting to get by leader Mike Conway, but after 10 laps, the team decide it is time to swap their places. Clearly, the number eight car has a little bit more potential pace. Toyota want two things from this race. They want to learn about their brand new car and they want a one-two result. Battle for seventh in LMP2 at La Source. John Falp for G Drive. And right behind him, Roberto Gonzalez in one of the two Jota Sport cars. Then the number one Richard Mill Racing Team machine, that LMP2 car, all female crewed. And this battle has been brewing all the way through the last couple of laps. Finally, the Jota car gets its nose in front. But it all got a little busy at the bus stop. Five into one rarely goes well. John Falb in the number 25 G-Drive car now under real pressure for a top 10 finish from Bikes Gavissa. Bedding herself in in this LMP2 car. It's the team's first start in world endurance after racing in European Le Mans series and at Le Mans last year. And John Falb in the G-Drive car feels the pressure. Three-way battle now for the lead in GTE and Matt Campbell, the car crashed and rebuilt. Dempsey Proton looking for the lead. Ben Keating on the inside. The Texan car dealer defends his position, leaves an upper wriggle room. Campbell on the curbs, finds the traction. He goes through, Keating in second place. And the two cars that started on the back row of the grid battling for the lead with the pole man. Roberto Lacourt for Chetila Racing, their first time out in GTE AM, facing the wrong way, exiting the bus stop. Oh, with Paul Dallalana disputing the position, and the Canadian in the Aston clatters into the rear wheel of the Ferrari. 
Lock up from Richard Leitz at the top of the hill, goes straight on at Les Combes. Chasing the Ferraris, trying to stay ahead of the Corvette. First pit stop of the new season for United Autosports. Phil Hansen comes in with a very substantial lead, racing Team Netherlands behind. Pit work absolutely crucial, no seconds to be wasted. For Dragon Speed 1, Pablo Montoya, his first race at Spa in nearly 15 years, and there's a race off pit road. The yellow and black Racing Team Nederland car was over three seconds quicker in the pits. That could be a race deciding factor. Team WRT, their first race, they come into the pits. G-Driver in as well. Alpine make the first hypercar pit stop, and they are stopping shorter than Toyota because their fuel tank will not accept the maximum amount of fuel that they are allowed to use. Toyota's will, and that could be a major factor in deciding the race. Alpine needs to make one more stop to get to the end than Toyota will. On board with Stoffel van Dorn, another Belgian hero, another superstar driver in LMP2. The stars in the reasonably priced cars are definitely trying to position themselves for future hypercar drives. And he's chasing one Pablo Montoya, two ex-Grand Prix aces of very different eras. Up behind the LMP2 G-Drive car. Oh, and there's contact. Roman Rusinov does not want to let Montoya through. Contact and Ben Keating is forced off. The GTEM car unbelievably avoids all the barriers. While well, Rusinov gets the rub from Montoya and Keating gets bounced off the racetrack. There will be a penalty for that, surely. Buffalo are using the rear a little too much. Be careful on power. Okay, let's try to pass Rusinov, but be careful, he's aggressive. It's always good when your engineer warns you things that you may not know. He gives Rusinov plenty of room. Pit stop for Toyota number seven. Mike Conway brings the car in from second place. It is the first pit stop for the Toyota Gazoo Racing 010. Do you want to change your drink for? Okay, you will push on your tire more and more. If you feel no deg, it's okay for me. You can push on your tire more and more. Take care in the beginning, but after, it will be good. That's exactly what a driver wants to hear as Conway exits the pits. The Alpine is given free reign. The team bedding themselves in. Their first race in the top tier. Their first race with this car. They've done very little testing. The number eight car comes in to Toyota Gazoo Racing for its first routine service. One lap after the number seven machine. But critically, the team examining all the aerodynamic openings to make sure. Oh, fuel hose comes off and goes back on. And the car is stopped in the pit lane. Is there an issue? The fuel hose must remain attached to the car for 35 seconds, and it looks like it was taken off early. There could be a penalty to serve for that. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Go, 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 go. Jimmy Bruni now at the wheel of the 91 Porsche, only in fifth place in GTE Pro. Does his teammate Richard Leitz have the answer to why? A bit sad, behind, frustrating because you, you destroy the front tyre because you follow them close, you lost the downforce uh, and, and then you cannot overtake because they are so fast and straight. But uh, it's a six hour race. Uh, we, we changed the strategy for this a bit and uh, we are still in the game. 10 seconds stop and go penalty on car 21 for causing a collision.
was unnecessary from them to, like when I got in, to start bouncing into me. Yeah, I don't know why Roman defended like that. It's stupid. Yeah. Rio rápido. Good. Two. No me olvido. Routine service for the race leader in GTE Pro, the 92 Porsche GT hits its marks. Kevin Escher's stunning qualifying laps seem to be being matched by its race pace. Corvette shaping up for a run to Le Mans. Just one car here to be appraised by the officials. But having a good run here, Oliver Gavin in his final ever race after 20 years nearly with Corvette Racing and sharing for the first time ever with longtime friend and teammate Antonio Garcia. The Corvette struggling though in the cold track temperatures here at Spa, not something they're familiar with racing in North America. And in the midst of this tight GT battle, look how long it takes the Toyota hypercars to get by. That's a little robust move there from Jimmy Bruni, easing Antonio Garcia out of the way. That barrier wasn't far away, was it? Third place battle in LMP2 and through goes Robin Freens for WRT, puts the moves in on 26 G drive of Roman Rusinov and Stoffel van Dorn. And here's how the two cars in front of him held up by the Aston Martin through a Rouge and Robin Freens goes sailing by like he's on a rocket. This is van Dorn's view. He got held up, so did Rusinov. Where's Freens coming? Flies by, absolutely fantastic racing action. Four men, you saw that? Yep, I saw that, you were nice. Nice job, mate. Keep cool. I think Robin Freeze enjoyed that. Yeah, mate, 10 more laps to go, 10 more laps to go. The LPG is not far behind. One point three seconds now. Super tight in hypercar. 1.4 seconds first to second, 1.6 second to third. Andre Negrau on a different fuel strategy from the Toyotas, but he is closing in fast. Lee Pair in in LMP2. Driver change ready at United Autosport. Philip Albuquerque runs round. Fritz van Eyre, the gentleman driver, getting in at Racing Team Netherlands just behind. Third place in the race in LMP2 is WRT, and there's a driver change here as well. Ferdy Habsburg makes his World Endurance debut. Out gets Robin Freens after a great stint. Definitely enjoying it, yeah, yeah. We had good fun, uh, also fighting with Stoffel. I mean, I know Stoffel for, for many years now, so uh, it was good fun out there. I, I felt pretty strong in the car, so it makes it even more fun. Um, just a bit struggling on, on top speed because I couldn't really overtake the guys in front, but in the corners, the car feels good and we're moving our way forward. I think we are P3 now, or we are just on a, on a podium position, which uh, is definitely the target for today. Yeah, Mike, five more laps to go. Five more laps to go before driving change. Almost at the end of his double stint, Mike Conway. And that on the same set of tyres might explain this little moment at La Source, just outbreaking himself a bit with a lock-up. Racing Team Nederland, Fritz van Ert still in second place. Some fantastic pit work from the team. What's the secret? Yeah, the guys, they work quite hard on it uh, during the winter. And I think that was one thing that we had to improve from last year. And uh, the crew did a, a really, really good job. I think uh, the car getting better and better during the run. The beginning was struggling a little bit. To say Phil Hansen and United, they were strong all weekend. We pulled quite a big gap and on the end, uh, I could come back. and. Yeah, it was nice that we were leading for a couple of laps, but Fritz now in the car. We are leading the, the Pro-Am series, which is the most important. So we'll see where we end up today. Another team competing in the Pro-Am Challenge is Real Team Racing, brand new to World Endurance Championship with Norman Nato, Loic Duval and gentleman driver Esteban Garcia. Fred, j'ai vraiment chopé du trafic au mauvais endroit, tu vois, à chaque fois quand j'arrivais dans le Raidillon ou... Tu vois, enfin, vraiment les mauvais secteurs, quoi. c'est pareil qu'avant, ou... Tous les tours à fond. C'est vrai J'ai pas passé un tour sans mettre à fond. 
tous les toits, tous les toits, tous les toits. Ah, c'est bon signe. La voiture, j'ai trouvé bien aussi. Hein La voiture, j'ai trouvé top aussi. Bon, ben, ça va pas être facile, hein. Voilà, là, il faut de la chance maintenant. Nico Lapierre, the veteran on board in the Alpine hypercar. Toyota, 8.5, 8.0. Ça va le faire, ça va le faire. Team telling him Toyota doing two minutes eight laps. He's doing two minutes sixes, taking the battle to the hypercar leaders. Into the pits, Mike Conway from second place, but the Alpine is very close behind. As he hands over to Jose Maria Lopez, there should be a position change. The Alpine looks like it's going to move up into second spot because of the different fuel strategies. Across the line goes Nico Lapierre. He is in second place, and the number eight Toyota could lose the lead. Topping up number seven from the pressurized system, that will be oil. This car hadn't turned a wheel before Monday's prologue, the pre-season test. It is a, literally a brand new race car. It hasn't even had a shakedown. Just getting mileage at new tracks is always good for us to, to understand the car a bit better. And um, yeah, we had a lot of issues at the beginning of the week. So um, just to get some good smooth running in is the goal really. Um, but yeah, we're fighting out there, which is good. We've had a few more, so that's kind of what we wanted in the end. It's what the fans want as well. Hypercar already living up to its pre-season billing. Sebastian Buemi hands over to Brendan Hartley, the Kiwi with a chrome livery on his helmet this year. But again, look on the map, see how close the Alpine is. It will take the lead of the race before the number eight is finished. Lapierre sweeps through in front. This is a massive moment for the Alpine team in their first race in Hypercar. Drama for the GTE Pro leader coming in short from the end of his stint. Kevin Esch handing over to new teammate Neil Jarni. Last time he raced in World Endurance, it was in a Porsche 919 for overall victory. 51 Ferrari now with the race lead ahead of the sister 52 car. United Autosports still comfortably in front, despite being outpaced in the pits by their rivals racing team Netherlands. We need to understand why their first pit stop was so quick. Um, I, I doubt they were doing anything to try and, you know, fill three seconds less fuel unless they have some, some crazy fuel saving strategy, which I, I highly doubt. Um, yeah, we need to find out why we lost so much time in that first stop. But ultimately, you know, they've got an AM in the car, so that's not the car we're really fighting. Um, the most important thing was just to stay out in front and stay out of trouble in the early, early parts of the race. Battle for third in LMP2. Nick de Vries for G-Drive down the inside of Sean Galeel in the 28 Jota car. And there's the Racing Team Netherlands car of Fritz van Ed. Now, he was in third at the beginning of the last lap. Ah, oh, this is where he loses the time. A piff paff going round the Ferrari, gets onto the dirty part of the track, keeps it all together, but the quicker drivers do get by. In from second in GTE Pro, the 52 Ferrari. Miguel Molina will hand over to Daniel Serra, who's a full time part of the lineup for the first time. Oh, what are we seeing here? That is Nick de Vries in G Drive's 26 car in the gravel. Sean Galeo going through for third place. Let's see from Galeo. There was a GT car in front. Did de Vries go the wrong way round him? By the way, he loses a spot. Nick de Vries right behind Sean Galeo, chasing the Jota car for third in LMP2. So it looks like no damage from that little bit of rally crossing. And he takes back third spot. Battle for ninth in GTE Am. Rahel Frey for the Iron Dames up the inside of the 47. Giorgio Senna Giotto tags the back of the rival Ferrari. And around she goes. Oh, almost got through unscathed. Where 
just driving the car. We almost had a big crash. Yeah, copy. Saw them. Saw them. Da Costa. Da Costa ahead. Oh. What happens here? On board with Brendan Hartley, heading down the hill. There's Antonio Felix da Costa, the Formula E champion. Hartley goes outside. Oh my goodness, no wonder he was a bit aggrieved. Da Costa had no idea he was there. In the pits, Nico Lapierre for Alpine. Comes in from the race lead. Checking the tunnels for debris, making sure nothing's hanging in there. And here comes the number seven Toyota, back in front and ahead of the number eight car. Little heart in the mouth moment here for Nico Lapierre. Goes around the 88 Dempsey Proton Porsche and doesn't quite give himself enough room to get turned. Into the pits, the race leader for Toyota Gazoo Racing. Fuel goes in. Watching the clock on that one. Well, this car had lots of problems in the prologue. Number eight car has done all the pre-season testing. So this car is well bedded in, but the number seven car, a bit of a problem child. Oh, and as they squeeze out of the pit lane, did they hold up the real team racing entry? That might be a penalty. WRT versus Jota, Antonio Felix da Costa inside Young Ferdy Habsburg for third in LMP2, Pifaf in traffic. And there is Van Saint Vos, the boss of WRT. Local hero, local team, down the inside da Costa, right there, racing team Netherland as well. Three-way battle, oh, getting very close. Da Costa's got the position though. Has he? No, there's an overlap down into a rouge. Habsburg's going back alongside him. Wheel to wheel. He can't use all the road, but they still survive. Now then, slower traffic in front. The GT car could be the key, and Da Costa is easing Habsburg up behind the Porsche. Ferdi has to back off. Antonio goes through, and the racing team Nederland car follows through as well. That's great racing now it's by Antonio Felix Da Costa. This is going to be the move of the race, isn't it? In traffic with GT cars and the number one Richard Mill car. Da Costa diving inside Habsburg. There's contact there, Ferdy runs wide. Over the curbs, more contact. The battle for third. Gerda van der Gaard right behind has the absolute perfect view of this. And door to door in Eau Rouge. That takes courage and confidence. Habsburg holding his own against Da Costa. And then Da Costa uses the traffic. He follows the number one car by the two slower GT cars. And Habsburg is hung out to dry behind them. Nearly three hours done in the Spa Six Hours United Autosport. Still firmly in charge in LMP2 as Philip Albuquerque hands over to new boy Fabio Scherer. WRT in the pits, but there's trouble. The dollies have gone under the car. It's going back into the garage. Their top three finish looks like it might be in jeopardy. They're looking down into the nose box and that normally means brake or clutch. That's where the master cylinders are. Midway through the Spa six hours. In hypercar, it's Alpine that has the advantage. United Autosports leading from Jota and G-Drive in LMP2. They are still on top of the pile. The GTE Pro battle is just as tight as ever. At the moment, the AF Corsa Ferrari leading after the punctures for 92 and the 91 Porsche have set them back. There's still three hours of racing to go. And in GTE Am, the 83A of Corsa Ferrari leads from the pole sitting T of Sport Aston, but it is still anyone's race.
In the new hypercar class, the battle is intense. Alpine are really piling the pressure on the Toyotas. We had to push a lot at the beginning because we wanted to get the, the lead of the race, uh, to push them a bit, to get them out of their comfort zone. Um, so we had to push a bit on my first team, took the lead, and uh, now we're on different strategy because they go much longer on the stint. So obviously they're going to have... Uh, one pit stop less in the end, so we, we need to try to open a bit the gap, but it's difficult because they are very strong uh, over the stint, so it's going to be tight. I think they have a little advantage, to be honest, if the, if the race stays green. But uh, let's see, for us it's a learning process as well, it's the first race with this car, so we need to, to push and go to the end and learn as much as we can. WRT trying to leave the pit lane. The driver starting the car in gear. They've got a clutch problem, no question about it. I felt um, already on, when I first started that uh, there's uh, something soft with the clutch. And then, uh, yeah, I came in for my first pit stop and it, the car just stalled. I was not able to kill it, kill it manually. And then, uh, yeah, I already knew the soft is getting bad. And as I set off, it, it could not really, it was jumping and it, it's just getting worse and worse. So hopefully we'll be able to finish the race after the next couple of pit stops. Trouble at the bus stop. Jose Maria Lopez not getting the Toyota cleanly by the Porsche of Richard Leitz. The 91 car having a troubled race. Now he's been hit from behind. On board with Lopez, but he pulled out of the move, but not in time. Damage on the nose, the number seven car, and you have to wonder whether there'll be a penalty for that contact with a slower vehicle as well. Battle for 11th place, Richard Mill Racing Team, and the recovering number 21 Dragon Speed car on the curbs in traffic, avoids the Iron Dames Ferrari, but Ben Hanley in the gravel. Look how close this is. He just avoids tagging that Ferrari, but he has to sacrifice his own grip on the track to do so. Richard Leitz, the 91 Porsche, off track. He's lost all of the right rear tire. That's the corner that was hit by the Toyota. And for the second time in the race, an unscheduled stop with a right rear puncture. We do at least know how this one came about though. Into the pits, the number seven Toyota that made contact with 91. The cover on the light is missing, but the light still works. They lose the lead to Toyota number eight and the Alpine will go by as well. They drop to third. Full course yellow, full course yellow. First caution of the race, that'll be to clear up the tire debris from the 91 Porsche puncture. And our race leader now, as the number eight car has stopped, is the Alpine. Number seven back out of the pits. And Alpine could use this opportunity to try and top up with fuel, see if they can somehow negate the extra stop that they're expecting to need against their Toyota rivals. Three, two, one. Full course yellow removed, full course yellow removed. Back to green flag racing. Trouble for Toyota's number eight car. Unsafe release. A penalty will be added to their next pit stop. And you can see why. And for number 22, United Autosports. Well, here's the United car being released from the pits. And that was very close with Dragon Speed. After disappointing qualifying, Jota's 38 car up to third, chasing the 26 G-Drive car right in front of them. The United car, they're, they're a step ahead uh, this weekend. They've looked super strong all weekend. But um, yeah, it's going to be a long season. Um, and we're, yeah, we're definitely stronger than last year. So we, we want to take the fight up to them. Replay of United's Fabio Scherer having to get onto the grass to go around the Iron Lynx Ferrari. Whoa, again, I don't think the Ferrari driver saw him coming. Into the pits. And a final exit from racing for Oliver Gavin. Antonio Garcia will take over for the final double stint. 
as Oliver Gavin completes his racing career with Corvette. And what a place to do it at the awesome Spa Francorchamps. Great job, man. Thanks, bud. Thanks for everything. Thanks. It's been real. 20 years of uh, driving for this team. It's, uh, it's been such a pleasure, a real honor to wear the overalls and to represent Corvette. And, uh, you know, it's been an amazing journey. We've, we've had so much success over the years. And, uh, you know, so many, so many Le, Mans, Le Mans victories, and, and not just for myself, but for the team in general, and amazing championships in, in the US. And, I'm just, just so proud of, of the whole team and what we've managed to achieve. So, uh, yeah, I'm a bit emotional right now. I mean, after 20 years, it's, 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 it's been quite a journey. Replay here, trouble for Kamui Kobayashi. Oh, he's in the gravel. Well, what happens? Behind the WRT car, big lockup. Was he getting in too fast? That is a big error. I don't know, can we try to go forward? Maybe a real one? I don't know. Yeah, can we just wait for the marshal? Full course yellow and the Toyota dragged out of the gravel trap. The Alpine puts it a lap down. There are clearly new car issues with the number seven machine. But it's good news for Alpine. Okay, Mathieu, we are P1 of the race. P1 of the race. It was Toyota 7. Stay focused. Stay focused. Mathieu Bazivier leading for Alpine. Pass goes Kamui Kobayashi unlapping himself on the race leader in the number seven Toyota. But if the number seven car keeps leaving the road under braking like that, they may not even make it onto the podium. United Autosports, LMP2 leader, not far behind. Drive through penalty car seven for the contact on car 91. Into the pit lane comes the number seven Toyota, and that will cost them third overall. The 22 United Autosports car leads in LMP2 and in an overall podium position with 90 minutes of racing still to go. Sophia Flourish in 10th place in LMP2 for Richard Mille, one of two crews that is all female in the race. To have two full female lineups here, um, it's, it's incredible. This is uh, the highest level of endurance racing. And I think we have to show the world as well. This is another route um, and a lot of girls coming um, in, in the junior category. So I hope that we can be or oh, inspire uh, the next generation. I'm super happy to have their support here as well with Michelle Mouto, who's who came to, to support us in this first race. Trouble for G-Drive, the number 26 car, always a competitor here at Spa and in the European Le Mans series where they spend their time racing. And the car has been told to pit because it is leaking oil. Drive-through penalty for United Autosports, one of nine cars penalized for full course yellow infringements. Achingly slow down the pit lane. But they still have the lead of the race from the 38 Jota car. Philip Albuquerque heading into the final hour. How is the situation? We are good, good. One more, one more pit stop for us and it will be driver change. One more stop, it will be driver change. We're in a good position. In the final hour here at Spa, so the number eight Toyota leading the race, their final stop. Alpine will also have to stop. So Seb Wemmy getting back in, Brendan Hartley giving him encouragement. Number eight car will have a five second hold to serve before the pit stop can begin because of that unsafe release. Here is the Alpine, now goes through as the race leader, coming up behind the 28 Jota car in LMP2. 
Down through a Oh my goodness, contact! I don't think Tom Blomqvist saw the Alpine coming. Look at this. Wow, that was close. Watch the eyes of Andre Negrau. 92 Porsche leading in GTE Pro. Final pit stop as well. All looking good for Kevin Estra and his new teammate, Neil Jani. Well, so far, uh, first GT race experience has been uh, great. Let's hope uh, for the last 40 minutes it stays like that. Um, yeah, Kevin did a great start, you know, got us a gap. Then uh, I got in the car, I could actually open up the gap a bit. But because he had to come in with a puncture early, I had to start saving fuel just to get back into the window. Uh, luckily, the full course yellow then uh, helped us with that. Sudan, 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 we have a puncture, we have a puncture. Sudan and box, box in this lap. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, sir, sir. A slow in lap, but within their fuel window, final stop for Alpine. That could have been so much worse. Through into the lead, though, goes the number eight Toyota. Was that a legacy of contact with the Jota car? It's the same side. Oh, trouble for 77, the Dempsey Proton car, the Christian Reed crashed on the outlap of qualifying. Jackson Evans rolling down the hill. There's no fire in the hole there, is it? He is absolutely without power. Full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. I'm intervening at the runoff of T8. I've got marshals exposed in the runoff of T8. There's been a lot of learning on the go. I mean, we, we did a lot of testing on the lead up to this, but always by ourselves. So yeah, it hasn't been without troubles. We've, we've had a few little issues here and there, but we've, we've kept it on the road and yeah, lo lots of little lessons, but so far, yeah, really happy that we're still in the lead. and. I don't know if there's 30, min 30 minutes or so to go, but um, hopefully we can stay there. We shouldn't need to pick. Kaz did 26 laps on the last stint, so he managed to save a lot of fuel. And I think Seb's um, got the fuel mileage to get, it, to get it back. All going well for number eight, but the number seven Toyota is having all the team's problems. It is the brand new car and a lot of new car problems. Kamui Kobayashi finding somewhere safe to recycle the car and get it started again. Luckily, under full course yellow. Green flag racing into the closing stages. Choti Gazoo Racing leading in Hypercar, United in LMP2, 92 Porsche in GTE Pro, the 83A of Corsa car, Nick Nielsen doing the final stint. Great start to their championship defense and a drive through for Tom Blomqvist. And that is a result of contact with the Alpine. Well, that drops the 22 out of second place in LMP2, puts the 38 Jota car through. Corvette coming through for a drive through as well as Dragon Speed behind. These are all full course yellow infringements. And the last few moments of the six hours of Spa. Fingers crossed for Toyota's Brendan Hartley and Kazuki Nakajima, their teammate aboard number eight, Sebastian Buemi. It's bringing the car home to the chequered flag. What a great race it's been in this centenary year at Spa-Francorchamps. The first race of a new era. Hypercar victory goes to Toyota Gazoo Racing. Their fifth consecutive win here at Spa-Francorchamps. Oh, yeah, the car had a lot of little lock up I think we, we deserve, we, we deserve it. Yeah, we deserve it. Good. We didn't make any mistakes, it was nice. Yeah. It was very hard on the second stint. 2 0 I did the first lap. Ah, boy! Good job, well Kat. Good job, Kat. In LMP2, the champions start their title defence with a resounding victory. United Autosports on top once more. Thank you that you pushed for me, mate. No worries, no worries. We have it in control. Very good job. You did well. You did well. Ah, feels good. What a dominance, huh? Damn it.
The 92 Porsche crushed its GTE Pro opposition in qualifying and in the race to open with a win. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Great job. Great, great. 83A, of course, the team start their GTE Am title defense with a resounding win. The debut of the new Hyperclass was a thriller. The number eight Toyota team took the advantage, but Alpine clearly have plenty to show to their big factory rivals. In GTE Pro, the 92 Porsche had all the fun and the 91 all the bad luck. Ferrari looked as strong as ever. Pro-Am Challenge winners and fourth overall racing team Netherland, Fritz van Aert, Gerd van der Gaard and Jop van Eutert. Not everybody was in the mood to celebrate. But Spa is hard to us, always, huh? for, for some years. For some years, yeah. yeah. Uh, whatever the category is, Spa, in the last years, really, really hard to us. What about the next one? We will be better. Hope so. <laughs> Mais sinon, en perfo pur, quand tu regardes les, les secteurs et tout, c'est euh, parmi, euh, parmi la United dans le premier secteur. Sinon, on est là partout, donc euh, voilà. A voir. A voir. Next one, Portimao. Ouais, Portimao. Boom. On se retrouve à Portimao. Ciao.